guys, this is the NRW giving you the NEW, and I am Patrick Michael Strange here with my squad NRW. I have Glenn Lawrence McDonald. I have Alicia G, Mr. CY, <laughs> giving me that look. Dalek <laughs> seconds in the house. So. I got Belle. I got Brandy, aka Word Box, CC the Greek Geek, Lewis Bailey, KPRM Gaming, <laughs> aka NRW Gaming, Bizarre Bizarre, my man Giano, and the Black Unicorn behind the camera helping me as always, Miss Mary Ann. I am Patrick, and I am about to tell you our pop culture moment of the year with a squad. Uh, we had a lot of nominees, uh, but we're going to uh, go with that real quick, and then we'll tell you what is the winner for pop culture moment of the year. Uh, we had the first female Doctor Who debuting this year, which was super exciting to finally break that moment, especially with this year being the Me Too movement, to have a female Doctor Who. We're really excited about that. Uh, this one left me depressed. Toys R Us closed. Oh. Yeah. Well, as a former yeah. employee of Toys R Us, as a former employee of Toys R Us, Unite. Oh, my, heart weeps. Our heart, our heart weeps. weeps. our heart 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 weeps. Yeah, they were do, do, do you not want to grow up? Oh. No. no. Are you a Toys R Us kid? Always. <laughs> you don't want to grow up because if you did, I'd never be a Toys R Us kid. <laughs> so all of us Toys R kids are very <laughs> depressed about that win. Um, the Crazy Eight Rich Asians premiere. Uh, was super important for a lot of people, especially me being the Asian, the resident Asian guy in it. Yeah, I'm the resident Asian guy here. <laughs> That's like, I um, gotta check. <laughs> after 20 years, Joy Luck Club was our first big, full mm -hmm. Asian cast. We right. finally got Crazy Rich Asians. It was an excellent film adapting the novels of the same name. Yeah. If you haven't had a chance to check it out, check it out. Uh, we'll be probably talking about it with the films of the years later on. Uh, really good. I actually had I was honored with the chance to speak at the Smithsonian this past year on the film when, oh, when it debuted. So, nice. uh, yeah, I'm super excited and hopefully I can't wait the other two uh, books being adapted to continuing it on. So that was a big moment for the year. Um, hashtag fuck Trump. That was a big thing in many ways. Uh, we'll probably talk about that in worse stuff in greater detail. So, uh, yeah, for all of us that really mm -hmm. don't like the GOP and Trump, uh, that was a big thing for this year. And it actually, and why we're talking about it in pop culture, it extended itself into popular culture mm -hmm. because that guy is just yeah. Uh, um, another big moment this year was uh, Black Panther. And sp speaking of diversity, along with Crazy Rich Asians, Black Panther in February, as well as Spider Man here in December in Into the Spider Verse, showing that hashtag diversity matters and hashtag Black heroes matter. Great moment for people of color, for African Americans especially. Um, just really awesome, making us all feel that we can all be superheroes. So that was a great moment for this year. And uh, going back into a depressing note, Stan Lee's <laughs> death. Um, um, it's now going to probably be very difficult for all of us with the uh, upcoming Marvel films because he already recorded them uh, before he passed uh, away. It's, it's going to be uh, very hard, I think, uh, for a lot of us uh, to see him tears. in uh, oh, Endgame tears. and Captain Marvel and all of that. Uh, so... Uh, uh, so they should have made him fade away in an Affinity War. Dude, no. Oh. No. no. He wasn't gone, man. No. No. Way too soon. 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 Way We've all watched into the Spider Verse. Uh, yeah. We'll talk about that later. We'll save that. Yeah. So, but you know, <laughs> Stanley is still around. He still appears every now and then. So he hasn't been erased. Yeah. He may not. He may no longer be with us physically, but he will always be with every nerd, geek, comic lover, video game lover, by spirit and by a former digital media. I, right. I just used to believe he's on an island with Tupac and Hugh Hefner. <laughs> <laughs> Having a good old time. Right, but did he play Hugh Hefner? <laughs> yeah. Iron Man? He got mistaken for Hugh. Yeah. That's right. All right, before we announce the winner of all these nominations, why did you vote for the specific uh, thing you voted for? So, uh, who, Toys R Us closing. Surprisingly, I didn't vote for it. I didn't either. It was way far down the list. Yeah, it was. There was yeah, just like, so much. Okay, yeah, was, if you didn't vote for it, didn't skip it. Because <laughs> I'm a Toys R Us kid, and I don't ever want to grow up. <laughs> if I grow up, I won't be a Toys R Us kid. Word. And I won't ever play video games, enjoy trains, chains, 
I can't remember the What's the collection of Asian movies? That's a movie. Oh, that's a movie. But that's a movie. that's an impolite question but, to ask some of us. But to see, <laughs> we're, to see we're my <laughs> Toys R Us, and we even took a trip there to snag 50% oh, yeah. off on Pops, and just pops. see everything going out. And I think what the saddest part about it was if you had Twitter and you saw Toys R Us's tweet of Jeffrey the Giraffe with a suitcase on the final day of closing. Yeah. With that, all those empty shelves and yeah, all those clearance signs. That was, that was what very you sad. You know what was even more sad was going into a Spirit Halloween that used to be a Toys R Us and there was still a Jeffrey hand gliding yeah. from the ceiling. And it was just oh. like that. You have that put so you have sad. put a spirit Halloween in the rotting corpse of my Rubber childhood. <laughs> no, of my childhood. And it has red eyes and shot fainting. <laughs> that is the savagery of So I'm I'm one of the other ones who voted for that, and one of the other reasons is in addition to all that, when you know the reason why it happened, it gets even more infuriating. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, it does. Um, T- Toys R Us was actually profitable. <laughs> the problem was is that leveraged buyouts that had taken over the company and uh-huh. all this crap, it had been saddled to all this debt that it didn't accumulate, and because it couldn't make the payments, it was forced by creditors uh-huh. to go out of business and liquidate. Uh-huh. Yeah. Other than that, like they weren't doing the best business, but they were profitable. Right. And now all these creditors who were in charge of the IP, they're like, oh, wait. After all this creative, you know, all this media backlash and all this coverage of the, sh- of the stores going out, they're like, oh, wait, we do want to cover this. We're going to have these Jeffrey toy boxes and Aldi's and oh. Kroger's and all oh, that. Oh, don't, don't get me started on those. Yeah. It's, it's so sad. It, something that a lot of us grew up with, and it was like, not because we lived there or anything, but it was like, it was the aspirational thing. I'm going to go to Toys R Us for my birthday, stuff right. like that. It's like, where you yeah. Some of us are of the age where our first experience with video games were those locked cabinets yep. in the Toys yep. R Us. And the yeah. paper. And yeah, you had to pick up the little slip of paper. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah. Like, I think I'm yeah. yeah. three from yeah. Toys R Us. All of that is gone. That PTSD. I used to work this video game page. I used to work right beside it, and they let me cover it sometimes, and that was a dangerous thing. And, and, <laughs> and this is just the death of a... Of a major kids toy store, like there are no. It's the only stores. one left. KB yeah. already went yeah. out. Yeah, KB KB was was in. In. Yeah. I mean, unless it's like a a boutique actual right. board game kids store right. in DC, you don't have a major store that is just. It's all Walmart kids, and Target now. That's this it. is a full Amazon. toy store. Go. Have well, fun. Amazon's actually not doing too good with that. See, and when I right. when I was growing up, we Bad didn't have a Toys Rest Amazon. until I was older, so it was all KB, and yeah, that was a. Nightmare yeah. to navigate. Oh, we have so GameStop. Oh wait, no. Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, electronic boutiques, sir. Well, <laughs> the, cra- the crazy thing. Does that still exist? Oh, yeah. <laughs> still the, the crazy thing to me is I used to work at Toys R Us when I was very, very young, and I actually um, ended up getting fired for calling in sick too many times. And I told them, <laughs> "You'll never last without me," and I was right. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Are you taking credit for Toys R Us lives? Apparently they don't take credit anymore. (laughs) (laughs) I was going to tell you to get the fuck out. (laughs) (laughs) Maybe maybe some cash flow? We'll close it up with the winner of Pop Culture Moment of the Air. We we talked about uh, a lot about Toys R Us. Um, Did we want to talk about anything else or do we want to get right to it? Yeah. Well, All right, let's, let's get, get right it, to let's it. Get over As it. the resident Russian, I'm hacking the results and declaring Toys R Us. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, I, I, I just have to say one thing. I know this might go on a little bit of tangent. I think it's awesome that we had so much diversity in pop culture this year. Yeah, I just want to give one more yeah. shout out to that. Uh, giving little kids uh, like yes. and women um, a place and um, someone a likeness that they can see and aspire to be yeah. is great. And I think we should just shout that out one more time. Before Thank you, Mac. That's, yeah. I was waiting for somebody else because I didn't want to be doing all the talking. Yeah. Thank you. So. Hello, Asians and, and as well as Black Panther. As well as women. I was like, but not to mention the, the Secret Warriors movie. So you had uh, Kamala actually getting a lot of merchandise out. Right. Miss mm-hmm. Marvel. Yeah. Getting a yeah. lot of merch. So so young young, young girls can sit, young girls who grew up Muslim could see themselves exactly in a superhero and yeah. that I mean I see myself represented as a white woman quite a bit but. Mm. Hearing from some friends, I have friends who are just like, I wish I had this when I was young. And yeah. it's, it's nice that kids now can have this. I wish they had it from the start, but right. it's nice. It's and, wonderful. And, and I think now, the best part about it is, is that most of the, but most if not all of these stories now, what's different about them as opposed to say, you know, 
to 50, 40, or even 20 years ago is that they're being told in the by the people who are in that image. Yes. You know, it's yes. not like we're being it's it's being told by it's not know, being like translated. Some, right, exactly. <laughs> by some white or whatever. Like it's literally being told through the lens of people who have lived those lives and they exactly. have done their serious homework. Um, particularly when it comes to um, Black Panther and I'm just mm-hmm. I, I watch it over and over again and I'm so proud, fighting tears and every um every time I watch it. So all right, yeah. and now you get a, you get a choice. Like it's not like just one. It's like oh, you you can right exactly like, like T'Challa or Killmonger or even War Machine. There's all these other like people of color that you could Nick Fury that you could Shuri. have um, yeah. Shuri, uh, Nakia. Like there's just there's all these different uh, choices now. It's not just the one. Absolutely. Like oh, you got to be Winston. What was it? Or from Ghostbusters, oh, Ghostbusters Winston, you yeah. gotta be Winston. Right. <laughs> like, I don't want to be Winston. Yeah, they played that in uh, Stranger, Stranger Things. Things. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. Sorry. Just had to. I uh, no no yeah. no. I was waiting for more input. People. But the guy who created all of that, who who made that happen, Stan Lee. Uh, all right. So we'll get right to it. Did, did you look at the, the results already? Okay. I think you looked at the results. So the winner of Pop Culture Moment of the Year is Stan Lee's death. I feel really weird drum rolling that. That's yeah. Just, no. so, we knew, we I mean, knew it was going moment. to happen. Mm-hmm. We didn't expect it this soon. Right. Um, Lord knows I cried a good bit. That, that I lost two heroes this year, so it was rough. Um, yeah, man. I cried in the middle of an Outback Steakhouse. Oh my God. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I, I I'm like, like, it, no matter where you are. My mom texted me. Um, Cause usually I'm the one like, hey, did you hear so and so pass? My mom texted me and said, I'm sorry you lost one of your heroes. Ah oh, oh, crap! Yeah. Hold on, hold on. Ah. Oh no. I used yeah. to get I used to get the uh, little introductory to the like OG Marvel characters, like these little books from the library, and they'd have like all the first couple of issues of it, and talk about the origins and break down stuff like that. And every week at the library, I'd pick those out. And that was my childhood. That was my introduction to comics, and yeah. Uh, it's okay. It, not it gonna is, ruin my makeup. We're, we're done. I'm done. Uh, it was a very powerful loss, like mm-hmm. on the on the scales of Princess Diane. You know, uh, yeah. the, the loss that we felt from Diana, Stan, Diana. Yeah. Princess Diana. Diana. My bad. Um, but it's it's also, um, in a way, amazing to hear his past interviews mm. and to really understand the type of person Stan Lee was and to know the amount of love that he had for his fans mm-hmm. just because they were his fans mm-hmm. and they loved his work. Um, and it was very genuine, not just a standard person of, yeah, I love my fans because they support me. No, Stan Lee had as much love for his fans that he did for his wife. Yeah. And that is just an amazing thing to hear coming from such an amazing man that helped bring together a genre that back then in the 60s and 70s was not really allowed for people in our group age as acceptable to be in. Mm -hmm. And now has helped bridge the gap to make comics popular, to bring diversity together to show that there is no, you know, animosity between race or creatures or mutants and humans. You brought everything together because we have a shared love for this genre that he helped create and pioneer. Mm -hmm. And he loved to be out in the public. Just absolutely love it. And I think that is just something that we should always remember and treasure him by. And and we've had our mourning phase for Stanley's passing. So now we should always celebrate his name for the greatness that he has brought everybody, not just us, but to everybody in the world. Excelsior. So, Excelsior. Excelsior. All right. Well real quick, before we leave out, Excelsior, stand up real quick. My boy Mac, we're going to sign off of the Pop Culture Moment of the Year. Best shirt in the house right now for this, especially this segment. See it? There you go. Stanley. Excelsior. Pop Culture Moment of the Year, Stanley. Excelsior. 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 No, Stanley's life. Stanley's life. Rest in power. Rest in power. Sorry. Sorry. You get sad because it's like, I'm just dead.
Rolling, rolling, sound speed. Testing, testing. Action. What's going on, world? This blah. All right, rolling, rolling. Here we go again. All right. No, no, you can keep it there. Ooh. I can edit that. Like you. <laughs> <laughs> Did you try to cut? Right, no, no. Right. Cut. Okay. And rolling, rolling. Sound speed. Action. <laughs>